Cardinal Patrick D. Rosario, Archbishop of Dhaka. Cardinal Patrick D. Rosario entered the priesthood in 1972 as a member of the Congregation of Holy Cross. For several years, he served the congregation's apostolic and missionary works in Bangladesh. In 1990, Di Rosario was appointed as the Bishop of Rashahi and later in 1995 as the Bishop of Chadakan. Soon, on October 22, 2011, he became the Archbishop of Dhaka. He is the President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Bangladesh. Pope Francis, on November 2016, raised him to the rank of Cardinal. The Holy Father gave him the title Cardinal Priest and assigned the titulus of Nostra Senora del Santissimo Sacramento e Santi Martiri Canadisi. Last year, in 2017, the Pope made him a member of the Dicastery for promoting integral human development. I never went to any minor seminary. I considered, or I had the opportunity uh, of a parish life, belonging to a parish. For me, parish was a, you know, a seminary for me. The pastor was accompanying me in their, uh, in, uh, in, my, in my life, in the school days. The thought that came to my mind I am a pastor now of a diocese. Three dioceses I have, pa I have been pastors. Uh, I celebrated 25 years as bishop two years ago. The things that dawned on me is that my family, my parents were the pastors of the domestic church family. They have pastored on me. They have formed me in the priestly life, uh, in the spiritual life, in the sacramental life. They took me every day to the church, every day. They have taught me the Christian faith, and they have also led me, give leading, give instructions, you know, the three functions that I have as a pastor, the priestly and, and the prophetic and loyal, the royal, that means governing functions. My parents did it at home church. So that's the faith that I grew with. And I think the time has come to realize this domestic church, uh, the importance of domestic church. In our pastoral activities, we should focus on family. All our activities in our parishes uh, should be geared to the formation of the family. I'm sorry to say uh, that church has not given enough importance. Church has given importance to the management of the parish, management of the diocese, and all. But church, church is a communion. Church is a mystery. It's a sign of the divine. And the church is, has a mission, everyone. The old the baptized and the confirmed people. We have too much emphasized on the hierarchy. And the body of the church, and okay, the head is not the whole body of the Christ. So many other parts of the body who are uh, belonging to the same church. And we have, maybe not in, you know, intentionally, but it's true that the base of the church has not got enough importance. Look at the marriage. 
marriage, we have taught, we have prepared the marriage, and only for follow certain norms, uh, uh, certain doctrines, very predominant, you know, uh, and uh, given all the directions, all the norms, all the canon law, all the all the rules and regulations that you have to follow in the married life. But where, where is the beauty of the marriage? Where is the beauty of the call? What is the plan of God? How, how they are the young people who are coming to the marriage experience that God is calling them? What have we done for this? Uh, how did, did we really bring out the beauty, of the beauty of the call of God so that they could respond? Uh, did, he, did we really bring out the vocation? We have talked about vocation to priesthood and religious life, but we have not given enough importance to vocation of divine vocation of this human people who are going, the two people getting together. And now that, that, that aspect has to be. And the, the former shows the parish councils, so the parish priests, they're not going to be manager, administrator, and all these things. They should focus on the family and you know, how they can build the domestic church, the church at home, the love in family, and the joy of the church. Wow. Well, Mother, <laughs> in every culture, uh, gets priority and they gets our focus and our, because of the affection, because of the care, because of the love, the whole feminine character of the church uh, is seen in our Blessed Mother, the mother who takes care of Jesus as well, takes care of the children. The Mother Earth is another aspect of that Blessed Virgin Mary who takes care of the Earth. The Mother, because we are all children of God, huh? and we have become children of God uh, through Jesus, whose mother is Mary. So therefore, uh, the Mother Mary has to uh, come in our, it's, it's a devotion, but at the same time is entering into the mystery of Jesus. If you see the whole rosary, uh, it's entering into the life of Jesus. Uh, so Mother is already a model, an uh, intercessor, our accompanying journey with us to go to Jesus. Do what my son has, is telling you to do. And uh, I also like that uh, Mary was at the wedding ceremony with Jesus. Uh, and, uh, and Jesus himself was, I love to go to the wedding ceremony uh, reception because I feel that Jesus and Mary was there to show this, this human or social institutions, human institutions like marriage is not simply social and human. It's a divine call, the presence of Jesus there. So the mother and Jesus is there always. I worked with the tribal people in Chittagong Hill Tracks. And uh, in my ministry, I came close to them. They belong to the tribal culture. And I discovered that there are cultural values which are fantastic and are great uh, values. But there are also traits in the cultures which does, does not, is not in harmony with the gospel. So I experienced that dialogue between culture and gospel. 
I had to preach the gospel values uh, to the culture of the tribal people. One way I saw the importance of enculturation, taking the culture in, in the church, in their teaching, in our, in our function of governing, in function of religious life, worship and all. But in another way, I saw also my duty to evangelize that culture with the gospel values. So because of that, you know, people at times went against me uh, because they didn't want to lose their cultural heritage, and which I understood very well because, you know, culture does not come in one moment. You know, it's a heritage, uh, it's difficult. So they were going through a transitional period uh, from go culture to the gospel values. And in this transitional period of 17 years, I was with them. And uh, I uh, realized slowly, slowly uh, that uh, transformation took place. But then I had to go through sufferings, got, even go through the death threats. Even my, my uh, co-workers, priests and religious, uh, and also the people, lay people, they had to go through difficult times. And I always considered as, as a kind of Paschal mystery in my life. Uh, there is death. There is cross, but there is also resurrection. And in these moments of conflicts, in moments of difficult times, I always remembered that I was consecrated in the Holy Spirit, anointed by the Holy Spirit. So every time I, I experience such problems in my ministry, as bishop, I all, always turn to my consecration day when the oil was poured on my head, not only simply anoint with the oil, but poured on my head. And my consecrator told me previous day, I'm going to put a lot of oil on your head. <laughs> so that uh, really inspired me and still inspires me that I have been given the Spirit. So Lord, it is your, you who are going to do, not me. You have called me. I did not, I did not aspire for it. Yes, I, I, I uh, worked for my priesthood in the sense I wanted to be a priest, but not bishop, not cardinal. All these are given to me uh, a vocation within, uh, different vocations within one vocation. So you do your thing. But I am, I am really uh, convinced or I have experienced that God has always helped me uh, in the difficult moments because it is His work that I do. I feel the church in Europe and all these established churches in America too, I think the emphasis was too much on institutions, institutional church. And together with that came the secularization. Uh, the church, the whole secularization movement is everywhere. So that has affected the church. The individual formation uh, was less, mainly a ritual, attending the services and all. Involvement of the people in the life of the church uh, was restricted to few only. But what I see in Asian countries, most of the Asian countries, the religion 
is part of the people. Secularization does not mean no religion. Secularization means for us, secular uh, state, it means for us a non-communal uh, country, nation, recognizing the religions of the other. First of all, this is an anthropological question. These human beings are religious, and this has somehow been lost in the West. And uh, we, are, uh, we are still holding that, and uh, we are still living that. That secondly, we are also uh, forming the people, the young people, for example, all the work programs that we have and you know, for the young people. Uh, this is a formation of them which will be lasting. Uh, wherever they go, uh, institution will not go, but they will go. And they will face the challenges of, the, uh, of this secularization movement or secular world. So uh, this is the difference I see, you know. Uh, secularization has really attacked the church, and church mainly not only the people, but also institutional church. And, uh, and that is, that is uh, really the uh, main problem now. And uh, why fundamentalism? Why militant, militant groups coming in the religion? And this is one of the reasons is that our Christianity has been too much secularized. They are not aware of their own faith. And uh, second thing is that they are, there are, it's not religious motives uh, for militarism, uh, militant groups. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, socioeconomic reasons. Uh, which has, which has got a very fertile ground on religion. Uh, with the name of religion, the socio-economic issues are coming. So, if there is any problem of this uh, militant groups or, you know, uh, or you know, fundamentalist groups, this is because this is not only. Uh, for those who do it, or the, the religion that they belong to, it's a problem for the whole world. Uh, now, this, there has to be a witness of the religious faith in all religions. I would like to say that you be joyful. And why the joy? The real joy will come out of God experience, out of Jesus experience. And how to have it? To have it through the consciousness that Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. Jesus has a dream for you. Jesus has a mission to be fulfilled through you. So therefore, be imbued with this call, with this mission, and go out to others, and be a gospel to others in your behavior, in your attitudes, and in your spirit of forgiveness, a spirit of mercy, a spirit of taking care of the poor, spirit of building justice in the society. And through this you go, go out to all the other people and even to uh, people of other religions. Now you have also a responsibility to, to go and mix with them and proclaim the respect, the interreligious harmony that we have and the treasure that we inherit from our cultures 
and you go. You go to witness that, and you make them conscious of their own treasure. So uh, be a very committed uh, person in your own culture, uh, along with your faith, and that will be your mission to all the people. Really, with pleasure, through the intercession of our Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and may God uh, bless us and keep us constantly under His blessing, He who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, world. God's own channel.